speaking of great content, I actually discovered a little something in the last couple of weeks that I wanted to share with you all. And it kind of, it kind of, you know, looks back to what a lot of us have a challenge with. And that is that our spouse or significant other doesn't necessarily understand our passion about the lawn or our excitement about the lawn or why we're so interested in taking care of our lawn. And I'm no different in that, that my wife just doesn't quite understand everything that I do in the lawn or understand why I care so much about it. Even though I am the ultimate in that I make a living on it now, she still doesn't quite understand it, doesn't get it. You know, I think that's funny because you know, if I had more of a traditional, and this is for you all too, if you had more of a traditional, you know, and I are, you know, our audience is 98% men. And I realize we have a lot of wonderful lady LCNs out there. So you'll get the same thing just in a little bit different way. But, you know, if I had more of a traditional man type hobby, it probably would be a little bit more understandable for my wife. For example, if I golfed, like let's say that I golfed twice a week early in the mornings and I was all into golf. And I watched golf on TV all the time. And when I was on YouTube, I was watching golf channels to learn how to improve my swing or maybe learn about new technology in a club or something to do with ball spin or whatever. I mean, I'm not a golfer, so you guys have seen the videos recently that have been out about with me golfing. You know that I'm not a golfer. But I think if I had a traditional you know, I think that's something that my wife would expect me to be a little overboard on. Or maybe it's not just golf. Maybe it's fishing. I know a lot of men have a very high propensity to like to go fishing. I know there is actually country songs where men are willing to tell their wives to to get out over the fishing. And uh, so I know a lot of people go crazy in fishing. So I think if I was more obsessed with fishing or I was more nutty about fishing, that that would be a little bit more acceptable and understandable to my wife. But the fact that I take such great care in the lawn is not understandable, and she doesn't quite get it. By the way, I want to give you guys a piece of advice. For those of you that do have a lawn care, you know, obsession, I don't like the word obsession, but for those of you that like to do your lawn as much as me and take a lot of pride in your lawn and talk about your lawn, look at your lawn and work on your lawn and improve your lawn constantly, for those of you that are like that, let me just say this. You cannot let on to your spouse that you enjoy the work. Even though I have a whole hashtag called enjoy the mow, you can't you can't do that because part of taking care of the lawn is also getting credit for doing housework and chores and just pulling your weight as part of the family, right? Just like taking out the garbage. There isn't anybody that that talks about how much they enjoy taking out the garbage, but you do it because it's just one of those things that you're tasked with in your household, right? And some people in your household might be tasked with laundry. Other people might be tasked with doing dishes. Other people might be tasked with cleaning the bathrooms and taking out the trash. Everybody's got their, their tasks, and sometimes you share in those tasks, and those are great when you can do that. But taking care of the lawn is also a task. Now, it just so happens that we really enjoy taking care of the lawn, but you can't let on because what will happen is when you let on how much you love doing the lawn, all of a sudden you get no credit for that being a chore anymore. You get no credit for pulling your weight around the house because you enjoy it. And I've noticed this definitely happening over time. So I always make sure to when I come in from doing the lawn and I'm sweating and I'm dirty, I make sure I complain about it to my wife. I make sure I go, man, I'll tell you what, it was just terrible out there today. Just weeds I had to pull and Man, I had to spray stuff. It was just horrible. I had to get it all over my my pants. And oh, and I stained my new shirt. And man, it was just was so hot out there. I got sunburned. It was just terrible. I had to slug this lawnmower around. So make sure you always do that. Make sure you you pepper in some of that negativity so you can, you know, keep credit for your housework and keep credit for pulling your weight around the house. But one of the things I've discovered, and this is really the point of this. Though and and, it, and I'm I'm trying to be funny here and make light of it, but it's actually very true. To get your spouse, your significant other, in my case, my wife, to actually appreciate what you do put into the lawn, because when you do go that extra mile and you really do put a lot of your time into the lawn, I mean, it would be much better for you to put your time and your energy and your effort and your money into your lawn and your landscape at your house where you live than to put it into fishing where you might be gone for hours on end and not be with the family, not be near the family, not be around the family. Some would even say ignoring the family if you got overboard on it, right? Same with golf. These things are all things that take place away from the house. So what you want to do then to get your spouse to understand that what you do is actually healthy for your relationship as well as it does look better because that's what they don't understand is that to have a beautiful lawn, it does take a lot more effort than people that just cut it and hate it and walk away from it. But what you have to do, you have to be able to to get them to notice. And the way that I've, I've found that I get my wife to notice how great the lawn looks 
is that I do something, is that I change a habit of mine that I know is going to get her to look at me differently. And, and I know this sounds a little bit strange, but I'm going to give you an example. I hate cleaning my office. Now, I'm actually filming this podcast in my office right now. And anybody that's ever worked with me, in fact, my friends at True Green that used to work with me, I was always known for having a messy desk. I would just have stuff piled. Now, not like a hoarder, right? I mean, it's not that bad. But definitely not clean. Definitely not picked up. Definitely not organized. Stuff would be all over the desk. Now, I knew where everything was. I knew exactly where I needed to get to things. And I knew how deep something was buried that I would need a month from now. I knew all of that. But my desk was definitely messy, and I like to keep my office the same way. You guys that see my garage, you'll, you'll see in my videos, the garage, my garage is messy. Now, I know where everything is, but I definitely, it's not spotless. I'm not the guy that has, like, my wrenches hanging on the wall with a meticulous outline of white paint around each wrench so that when I remove it, I can see that this wrench goes there because I can line up the outline with the size of the wrench. I don't have the, the epoxy floor that shines and, and has the, you know, dimples in it or whatever. I don't have the nice shelving that's all shut no 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 if if i had shelves like that there would be stuff flowing out of them that's just how i am but i know where everything is and that works for me my garage is definitely what you might call messy and the same is in my office here and in fact when my office is too clean i lose things i can't find anything and i know i'm not the only one that's like that however my wife, she has to look at my office because, you know, she comes in and out of here all the time and, and, and we'll talk and do things and whatever. And it's, it's a room in the house. So she sees it. You know, it's my office. It's a home office. I like to keep it messy. She does not like that. And in fact, it drives her crazy. But because it's my office, she doesn't get on me about it. She, she, she understands. However, there are times when I do clean my office. And when I do, it's like night and day. She immediately will notice. And in fact, she'll tell me, your office, thank you for cleaning your office. It makes me feel so much better because the fact is this office is in the house and so because it's messy, it just bothers her. And so when I clean it and I, you know, and pick it all up real nice, it's crazy. She just, she knows that. And what I've noticed is when I do that, with within hours, literally every time after I clean my office and she notices it within hours, she will also then compliment me on the lawn. She will go out of her way to go outside and find something nice about the lawn. Like this last time, it was the edges. And she says, wow, I really like the way the edges look. I love how it curves around the sidewalk and you have it nice and clean around that. She goes, that looks really, really good. And I'm telling you, for her to come out and say it in that way, it means that she really focused on trying to find something nice to say about what I do. And she took that time to notice it and sincerely compliment me on it. So I don't know if that worked for you guys. Some people would call this a love language. I would definitely call it that. You're kind of giving to you're kind of giving your spouse something to motivate them to then go out of the way to to notice and be kind and be caring about something that you care about. I think you guys are picking up what I'm putting down. That really works well. I wonder if you guys have tactics like that or strategies that you try. By the way, this is how relationships work in general. And I think a lot of you are understanding that a lot of times I'll equate the way we take care of our lawns and how taking care of your lawn can instill with you, within you things that you can use to improve other relationships in your life. Your, your relationship with your lawn is very different than relationships with humans, but there are concepts that you can learn like patience and understanding and, and, and nurturing and um, knowing when to push something and when not to push it. These are all things that you can actually take from your lawn care and you can use that to improve other relationships within your life, including work, family, friends, and everywhere else. So figured I would share that with you. Figured that might be a little cute. Figured that might be hit home for some of you. But let me know, definitely, if you're on YouTube, let me know in the comments below or wherever else you see me online, tweet me, whatever. Let me know if you've used such similar tactics to improve your relationships and mainly to get those compliments on the lawn because that's really the the end goal, right, is, is we have that lawn and we look at it and we know it's beautiful, but when someone else, especially someone who you know doesn't really care much about the lawn, when that person comes out and not only says, hey, the lawn looks nice, but actually compliments something specific about it that they took time to notice and understand – that is when you win. That is when you dominate. And that is total domination. And that's the kind of domination we want is when someone notices in that way and it makes you feel better, makes them feel better, creates a conversation and helps improve whatever relationship it might be around. All right.